Hello and welcome to the latest in Mott's webcast for bioprocessing. We are looking today at bioreactor spargers and design considerations to improve gas transfer, mixing, and reduce cell damage. Your speakers for today are Tim Goodart, our Senior Applications Engineer, and Greg Tedeschi, Product Marketing Manager for Healthcare which includes life sciences. And with that, I will take it, give it to Greg to take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Rosina. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Greg Tedeschi. I'm the product manager for the healthcare and life sciences group here at Mott, which includes bioprocessing. Uh, just briefly a bit about who we are. Uh, so Mott has been around for uh, over 60 years. Uh, making products for a wide range of industries from aerospace to life sciences uh, and, and process scale systems. Uh, we have the largest install base of porous metal filters, flow control units, including spargers uh, worldwide. And again, for a variety of, of applications uh, from things like the Mars rover to implantable medical devices. Uh, we have the most extensive metal alloy selection uh, for very uh, aggressive and, and uh, tough uh, operating environments, as well as expansion into ceramics and polymers. Um, and our customer innovation center is really our hub for industry leading innovation, new product development, co-development with our customers. Uh, and um, you know that, that's where we can develop, amongst other things, Sparger technology to improve performance in bioprocessing. Next slide. So our agenda today uh, will focus on the functions of sparging and bioprocessing. We'll do a comparison of sintered porous spargers versus uh, traditionally drilled pipe sparging. Uh, look at some design considerations for designing the sparger for your system. And then some of the newest challenges within the industry of bioprocessing and how that impacts sparger design. Uh, and then we'll finish up with how to work with us collaborating with Mott on your unique challenges uh, and go from there. Next slide. So diving right in here to the functions of uh, spargers and bioprocessing, first and foremost is oxygenation or aeration. And really that's that's to transfer oxygen uh, into the media and ultimately to supply cells uh, with the dissolved oxygen to promote their proliferation and the products that they uh, that they produce. Um, in addition to the oxygenation, there's also agitation uh, created by spargers, uh, which supports the mixing of the media to create a more uh, homogeneous environment for the cells to grow in, uh, and it aids in that reproducibility uh, from batch to batch or even in continuous models. Uh, and um, on the small scale uh, bioreactors, this can be done simply with the sparger, the agitation that is. Uh, and as you get to larger um, uh, process scale systems, it's often aided uh, by an impeller. And so the impeller and the and the sparger work sort of hand in hand in that regard. And also uh, the sparger functions uh, to help with uh, pH control of the batch. So modulating those dissolved gases, whether it's oxygen, CO2 or nitrogen in the media to maintain uh, that desired pH uh, environment for the cells to grow uh, effectively and consistently throughout the process. Slide. So talking a bit here about uh, aeration or, or oxygenation and some of the transfer, uh, the oxygen transfer steps. So um, the gas bubble or the, 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 the air bubble is generated by the sparger uh, and starts out with diffusion of oxygen from that bulk gas uh, bubble. Uh, to a gas liquid interface um, that then moves across uh, th that gas moves across the gas liquid interface uh, diffuses into the stagnant liquid region around the bubble and then transfers into uh, the bulk liquid so the the, the, the media itself and it sort of works in reverse fashion at this point where it it transports through that stagnant region around the cell or cell aggregate uh, and diffusing into that cell aggregate, so many cells sort of together, and then ultimately trans, uh, transporting across the cell membrane uh, into, into the cell, uh, the oxygen that is, 
uh, for uptake into the the metabolic machinery of the cell um, to produce uh, the products that are desired, whether it's enzymes or uh, monoclonal antibodies, what have you. Next slide. And so. Uh, when people are designing these systems, uh, they're, they, they've got a, a, a target in mind of, of gas transfer, often measured by what's called KLA, uh, you know, constant, which is constant to to really identify how much gas uh, a reactor uh, can transfer uh, into its cells, and that's that's derived and and in, in, in influenced by the gas concentration, which uh, is is influenced by the sparger. Um, and by the mixing uh, apparatus in, in the system, uh, as well as time or residence time, uh, how long the bubble is in suspension. Um, and a, a number of other factors here with uh, the volume of the system um, and the, the velocity at which the bubble releases off of the sparger, you know, how large the, the bubble is. And, and what this sort of all boils down to is smaller slower moving bubbles have more time and more surface area to diffuse their gases into the broth um, versus larger bubbles um, that are uh, might be moving faster. Uh, this is a trade-off of uh, agitation and aeration, so smaller, slower moving bubbles, uh, great job at diffusing, not so good at, at agitation. Larger bubbles moving fast um, it, it help with the agitation much more uh, but don't diffuse nearly as efficiently. Next slide. So I'll hand this over to Tim to talk a little bit about bubble size and predictability. Okay, so thank you, Greg. Um, this is Tim Gunnott, application engineer from Mock Corporation. Um, when talking about sparging and trying to introduce gas into a liquid, uh, one of the key factors is the surface area that you have for the gas to liquid contacting, as Greg has mentioned. The um, idea is to make the bubble size as small as possible so that you increase the gas surface contact area as much as possible. Um, this will result in transferring as much of the gas into the liquid that you can. Um, one of the myths with sparging is the bubble size is directly affected by the pore size. And this is not the case. There are several factors that can affect the bubble size. Um, the pore size of the <clears throat> sparger is definitely one of them. Um, but you also have the gas exit velocity, um, the surface tension of the liquid, <clears throat> um, the uh, viscosity and density of the liquid as well. Uh, with regards to the tank, you're also looking at the location of the sparger in the tank, the size of the tank, um, the amount of liquid head above the sparger, um, and if there is agitation, what type of agitation might there be. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the things we want to take a look at is the difference between a sintered porous sparger and a drill, drill pipe sparger. Um, next slide. As I'd mentioned before, with the, um, the porous metal sparger, you produce a lot of smaller bubbles, uh, which significantly increases the surface area. Um, if you look at the picture of the sparger compared to the drill pipe, next to it you can see that there's much greater size bubbles with the drill pipe, so you will not get the gas to liquid transfer efficiency. Um, it will do more for agitation, but the drill pipe, but it will also increase your foaming and um, will not work as well for the pH um, control as well. Next slide. Right, so so one of the first design considerations for spargers, uh, next slide, would be the expression system itself, right? So what, what cell type are you trying to grow and ultimately what product are you trying to produce from them? Uh, this has a huge impact on sparger selection, uh, largely because the cells behave very, very differently. Um, so if you're comparing mammalian uh, cells, so you know, a CHO cell, for example, versus a yeast cell, you've got a, a much larger cell um, you know, with, with no cell wall. 
uh, much more vulnerable to damage of uh, bubbles coalescing or impacting it. So the mechanical forces of a bubble uh, created by sparging uh, highly impact uh, something like a mammalian cell versus a yeast cell, which is smaller and, and, and more durable, more rugged, uh, um, but may require more uh, oxygenation. So on the other extreme, if you had uh, something like an E. coli batch here um, that requires a tremendous amount of oxygen by comparison and proliferates at rates that are much, much faster. Uh, so, you know, something like 15 to 20 minutes in replication of an E. coli cell versus 15 to 18 hours with the mammalian cell, uh, the oxygen consumption is that much higher. And so consequently, you need much more oxygen transferred into the system. Um, and your pH levels may need to be modulated um, more accurately uh, and more regularly as well. So understanding what cell line and cell type you're starting with first uh, is, is what will help drive sparger design. And some other things to keep in, in mind for your design considerations of the sparger is where the sparger is going, um, the volume of the reactor, um, is there a head pressure? Um, what kind of residence time are you trying to achieve? Um, are there any other internal hardware that's going to disrupt or enhance the um, gas to liquid transfer? Um, if you've got baffles on the sides of the reactor, um, and if you have um, an agitator, as the agitator spins, it'll help shear off some of the bubbles. Um, the baffles will also mix up the bubbles, help keep them separated um, so they can stay in the liquid longer. And then the other thing to consider is, is this going to be a single use or a reusable sparger? Next slide, please. So essentially, it, it kind of boils down to the, the gas transfer. Um, the, if you can increase the gas transfer rate, then you may be able to lower the, the gas flow rate or um, by increasing the gas exit velocity, um, you can increase the gas liquid transfer um, efficiency. The agitation mixing will also um, aid that uh, transfer as well. Next slide. And so one of the things that we've done at Mott over the years is we've developed several different shapes and sizes of sponges to meet the customer's applications. We do a lot of custom design work for our customers. You can see here some of the geometries that we have, um, pipes, uh, or tubes, discs. Uh, we also have um, an octagon sponge that we have designed for some applications as well. Um, you know, in terms of the material compatibility, um, most of our sponges are 316L stainless steel, but we do have other alloys we can use when required. Um, you usually want the sponge to be in a horizontal position so that you can maximize, um, or I should say minimize the bubble size. Um, and then what type of connection are you going to use on the sponge? Are you going to have a, uh, an MPT thread, um, a welded fitting, um, a bob fitting or some other uh, triclover or quick connect fitting. Next slide. So uh, as, as bioprocessing is ever involving, uh, there, there are new challenges um, that are imposed upon um, sparger designs. So um, the expression systems themselves are changing. So, uh, you know, biochemists and, and biologists are working on synthesizing new expression systems uh, using different cell lines uh, to produce um, more prolific um, and, and more repeatable uh, product. Um, so consequently, those cells, uh, as I mentioned earlier, have different requirements for gas concentration and how they are, um, how they are uh, physically impacted by uh, the, the bubbles that are produced uh, in the sparger. Um, the, batch, the batches are getting more dense uh, higher cell density. So going from things like, uh, you know, 2% uh, 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 cell density up to, you know, north of 30, 40%, um, you get a really much more viscous uh, um, batch uh, that requires uh, more oxygen, better mixing. Uh, these are all considerations that need to be taken in uh, when designing a sparger for what is effectively a different um, system at that point. 
and even looking at continuous processing or perfusion methods where um, the filtration may occur in situ even within the batch itself and so you've got this constant filtration that's going on um, you need to be able to filter but also maintain that oxygen level as the cell density increases and the cells aggregate next slide so just to wrap up here um, you know, moving to the next slide the you know designing a sparger is is a balancing act it's it's trying to weigh the benefits of gas transfer while minimizing uh, the mechanical uh, impact on the cells that would cause shearing or cell death. Uh, it's you know, ultimately trying to get to uh, the, the best titer possible uh, out, of the, out, of the, um, out of the batch or out of the system and, and maintaining a consistency across. So uh, you may have great performance in one run, but you need to make sure that uh, run after run uh, you're getting the right product at, at the right uh, purity and, and the right quantity uh, thereafter. And something we didn't touch on too much here, because uh, it is variable across different groups, but is there, there's an operating cost associated with this, where you've got gas consumption, which may not be as critical for something that doesn't uh, either doesn't grow very, uh, uh, take a long time to grow, or maybe not so prolific. But um, in even relatively small batches of, of you know, a few hundred liters, uh, some organisms can can consume hundreds of thousands of liters of, of oxygen or gas uh, in in a matter of hours or, or a few days. And so, you know, that, those costs add up and uh, it's important to um, make sure that what you're sparging in is consumed and absorbed uh, in the system and not just, um, you know, sort of wasted as it as it blooms out of the uh, the reactor itself. Um, and it can speed up time. You know, if you can grow cells faster, there's there's a savings there as well, of course. And so just a bit about how to collaborate with us at Mott. Um, you know, we, we do conduct uh, virtual technical workshops uh, with our engineers um, and you know, eventually in person uh, as needed. Uh, we can work on in-depth sparger design uh, and training for, for your folks and, and working hand in hand with ours. Uh, Tim's been designing spargers for 15 years now. Uh, so, you know, great to start with with someone like Tim here at Mott to understand um, a bit of, more about your application, what your goals are to achieve out of out of your sparger um, and out of your system, and then uh, working hand in hand with us to to design and, and ultimately manufacture that. And then beyond just the sparger, looking at the full fluidic system uh, for the bioreactor itself. As I mentioned earlier, Mott is a filtration and flow control company, um, and so uh filtration venting uh flow control these are all uh system design that we can work on with you so we have our, our process engineers um, that can put together an entire package working with your engineers and your scientists uh, to effectively make a complete system that's uh, more efficient for your application and with that we thank you for attending this webcast and watching, joining Tim and Greg with us. Um, we invite you to either reach out to Tim or Greg directly to either set up a, a meeting or get more information on any of the in, on any of the information you saw today. You can also contact Mott Corporation um, at info at mottcorp.com. But again, to get that personalized touch, I would recommend contacting Tim or Greg directly. Thanks again and have a great day.